When using standards-based grading in our class, the gradebook will look very different than in your other courses, which might be using traditional style grading. We will be using two different gradebooks in Canvas, and they will show you different things related to your progress and mastery of content in our class. In this video, you will learn how to navigate both gradebooks to determine your progress towards mastery of the standards throughout the school year. To get to the gradebooks, you'll click on grades in the left menu of your Canvas page. You will see two tabs on the gradebook, one for each of the gradebooks, assignments, and for learning mastery. I recommend arranging your gradebook by assignment group, which will help you when looking at your progress in the class. First, we will look at the learning mastery gradebook. It's not really a gradebook, but a record of your mastery of the standards in the class, which will help you determine what you have mastered and what you specifically need to work on to improve your mastery. You will not see any grades here, but you will see your current understanding of concepts based on a four point scale. Many of the assignments in this course will assess your mastery of the content and you will be assessed on each standard multiple times to demonstrate your understanding and mastery of the content. However, not every assignment will be assessed as many will be used as practice before any formal assessment. This gradebook will be updated regularly with rubrics showing you where you are on the mastery scale with specific and detailed criteria. You will also get written feedback on most assignments, even if there's not a rubric attached. This feedback will help you see your current understanding and what you need to focus on to improve your understanding of the content of the class. Here, you can see a screenshot of a sample student's learning mastery gradebook. You'll notice that there are 20 total standards up at the top right, but at this point, only two have been mastered. For each standard, you can see how many alignments, which means how many times you have been assessed on that particular standard, as well as if you've mastered the standard. So here for the standard 2.1 models, create a model, there were two alignments, so that means you were assessed two times. There were two different assignments that covered that particular standard or assessed that particular standard. And in this case, it wasn't mastered. For 2.2, it has been mastered. And if you click on the little arrow, it expands and you can see the assignment names that assessed that particular standard and where you fell on the rubric. We will have 20 standards in our class over the course of the year, but you may not see all 20 at the start of the year. I will be gradually adding in standards into the gradebook when we address them in class. I don't want to overwhelm you by seeing all of the standards and make it harder to um, scroll through and see what you need to look at. So the Learning Mastery Gradebook is where you will want to look to see your current progress and understanding of content in our class. The second gradebook is the assignments gradebook. This is what you may be most familiar with as it's used most frequently, probably in the rest of your classes. There are two purposes of the assignment gradebook. The assignment gradebook is where you will see your letter grade at the end of the grading periods, such as the progress quarter and semesters. Your grade will be converted into points using something called a decaying average. And that's where the newest assignments are weighted more heavily because each time you are assessed on that particular standard or reassessed on that particular standard, you get feedback and you learn more. And so you do better um, each time that you see it. The average of this learning mastery conversion of points will then be transferred over to the assignment gradebook. The second purpose of the assignment gradebook is that it allows you to view your status, to do a quick check to see if you're completing all the work. Here you can see if assignments are late, incomplete, missing, etc. And you can also view specific feedback for each of the assignments. Sometimes one assignment might be assessing multiple different standards, so you can view the feedback and view the rubric for that particular assignment. Here is a screenshot of the assignment gradebook. I mentioned it is helpful to arrange your gradebook by assignment category. You will notice that there are two assignment categories in our course. One is called assignments, where all assignments, such as labs, activities, practice, and assessments, will be posted. However, the assignments are worth zero points. 
since we don't really use points in standards-based grading. We use mastery levels. Also, you'll notice that this category is worth 0% of the letter grade. That doesn't mean that these assignments are really worth nothing. Attached to these assignments are the outcomes or rubrics for our standards, where your mastery will be assessed. If you don't do the assignments, you won't be able to demonstrate mastery. The second category is where your mastery from the Learning Mastery Gradebook will be converted or translated into points, which will go on your report cards and transcripts. Each time your mastery is assessed, the scores on the four-point scale are averaged using the decaying average, where your most recent score counts more, as with more practice and acting on the provided feedback, your mastery will increase. This category is worth 100% of your letter grade, and the assignments are worth four points, which is the top of the mastery scale. When viewing this gradebook, you'll see that it is divided into two sorts of assignments. At the top of this blue line, these are the assignments in the assignment category. Below is the assignments in the mastery translated to letter grades category. When looking at assignments in the assignment category, this can give you some great information about where you are in class. If an assignment is late or missing, it will be flagged in the status column. The scores are check marks, which means you completed the assignment, or if you see an X, that means that the assignment was incomplete, you turned it in but didn't address the standard or didn't finish the assignment, or if it's an X, it could just mean that you did not turn in the assignment. And you'll see that it's out of zero points for these assignments because this is um, not the grade for mastery. The next thing that you'll notice is that there are little comment bubbles. This is where you will have written feedback that is provided to you. And it will help you determine what you need to do to reach mastery. The clipboard icon on the right is a, actually a rubric, and here you'll find your rubric scores for all of the outcomes aligned or attached to that particular class assignment. You should also review all of your rubrics. Underneath the blue line is where assignments are posted that go into the mastery translated to letter grades category. Here, you're going to see an assignment for each grading period. The average of your standards that have been assessed by this grading period will be calculated and posted here. So you'll notice it has quarter one progress grade. It's out of four points, and the student got a 2.75. And then there's also a quarter one there. In the teacher gradebook, when I'm looking at the mastery levels for a student, I see numbers. And some of them are whole numbers, some of them are decimals. Even though it's on a four-point scale, the decimals are because of the potential from the decaying average, where the newest assignments are worth 65% of the grade, and the past assignments are averaged together for the 35% um, of the grade. So students, the most recent assignments are worth more as students progress and learn as they're going through the school year. So the mastery numbers or scales, what the student earned um, the, from the decayed average, those are all averaged together, and that is what is entered into the score at the grading report periods. You'll notice that next to the quarter one progress grade, there is a exclamation point within a circle. When you hover over that on the gradebook, it will show you that that grade does not count towards the final grade. So what will happen is quarter one progress grade will be added. That will be counted towards the the final grade. When quarter one hits, the new score is entered, and in this case it's a 2.88, and that encompasses all of the standards, and it does the decaying average where the most recent score is worth more. So I turn off the previous grading periods so that they don't count towards the final grade here because it's already encompassed into the newer grading period. But I wanted to leave it so that you can see student progress um, all in one spot throughout the year. Now, you'll notice that this student has a 72% in the class. In a class with a traditional grading scheme, that would be a C. In this class, with standards-based grading, that's a B. So when calculating, translating those points to a letter, 
you'll notice that with standards-based grading, our grade scale is equally distributed into bands consisting of 20%. On a traditional grading scale, each letter is worth 10% except for the F, which is worth 60% grade band. So when we look at the 72% from our previous example, that student has a B. When viewing your grade in Canvas, you'll see the box that's on the right at the top right of your Canvas gradebook screen. In this example, it shows a 63.3%. When parents and students look at that, they see a 63.3% and sometimes freak out. Remember that our grade bands are different, and you'll notice that next to where it says total 63.3%, it has a B because a 63.3% with our standards-based grading scale fits right into the B category. Letter grades will only be updated in Canvas and reported at the end of the grading windows. The goal of standards-based grading is on student learning and mastery of content, not focusing on just getting a top grade. It's not about turning in every single assignment. It's not about extra credit. It's about your learning. So we will be focusing on your mastery of the standards in the class, which will help you determine what you have mastered and what you specifically need to work on to improve. Think of when you were learning to do something new. Maybe you were learning to play basketball and shoot a three-pointer, or you were doing something crafty, you were learning how to knit. Did your coach or your teacher ever tell you that you did 73% in the game today? No, but they probably told you how to improve your grip of the ball or how to wrap the yarn around your finger to get better tension on the yarn. The best way to learn is to try, get feedback, act on and learn from that feedback, and keep working towards mastery of the task. That's how you learn, and this is what we will be doing in our class. I know that standards-based grading may be new and very different from what you're used to. Throughout the year, I'll be reviewing what standards-based grading is and what it looks like and how it's working with both students and parents to ensure that this is a smooth transition for everyone. Many times people are really hesitant and afraid of what this is gonna look like, and it's a little bit of a struggle at the very beginning to just figure it all out. But after everyone gets used to it, students and parents prefer standards-based grading. So please feel free to reach out with any questions that you may have. I'm happy and looking forward to working with you this year.